this time last year, I decided that I was going to start making videos with my blog posts. And I did a couple and then I never did any more. <laughs> so we're going to try it again. Videos with blog posts, take two. And today I'm starting with a gold and white Christmas wreath that will go really well with the mixed metal Christmas decorations that I'm going to do in my living room. And the best part about it is it takes less than 20 minutes to put it together. I do 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 da Welcome to From House to Home. This is where I share decorating tips and easy DIY projects with lots of color and a little bit of glam. And the goal is to inspire you to use your own creativity to transform your house into a home you love. So if you're into that, go ahead and sign up for my weekly newsletter at fromhousetohome.com slash email. Also, if you prefer reading and pictures rather than looking at videos, you can check out my blog post for the full step-by-step -step tutorial of this DIY project that we're going to do and I will provide the link underneath the video. Today's project is a white and gold wreath that is going to be kicking off my Christmas decorating season with a whole lot of glitter. <laughs> You'll be able to see it all on my table when it's done. Fortunately this is such an easy fast project that I'll have lots of time to clean up after it. <laughs> so here are the supplies you're going to need to do this project. First is a roll of ribbon. I used two and a half inch ribbon that's about 25 feet long. Um, it only took half a roll, so it's about 12 feet of ribbon that's two and a half inches wide. You can go less wide than this, but I wouldn't go wider because it makes it hard to wrap around the wreath form without getting a lot of bumps. And I got this at Michael's. They always have ribbon on sale. So that's where I would go for good deals on ribbon. Then you're gonna need some kind of evergreen garland. And obviously mine isn't really evergreen cause it's white, <laughs> but it's the shape of an evergreen. And again, I use, I get these garlands from Michael's always when they're on sale. I would never pay, pay the full price cause they always have sales on. And uh, it's usually a full length type garland. I've just cut pieces off of it. So that's why this one is shorter right now. But you could use green ones or even a live um, garland if you prefer to have live greenery on your wreaths. Next, you're going to need a couple of gold leaf picks. And these again from Michaels are meant for wreath making um, some gold leaves. Next, we're going to use some flowers. Mine are magnolia flowers that are in my colors, but you could use whatever kind of flowers you want. So you could have poinsettias or any other kind of flower that goes with your decor. And you want the ones that come on plastic stems that can pull off. So these flowers pull off the stems and they we don't want the stems on our leaf just a flower. So they're good for that. Again a Michael's fine. Then I used another wreath which is or sorry another garland which is these white ones and it has little pearls and sort of plastic crystal balls on the end. And we're going to use pieces of that to add some extra bling to our wreath. And finally, I added some diamond ribbon. Um, I didn't, I actually had this already, so I didn't buy it new, but you can find it on Amazon or actually I think they have them in the dollar store. You can get it all over the place. Anyways, I will add links to as many of these supplies as I can find links for <laughs> underneath the video in case you need to go find them. Finally, you need some supplies. So wire snips are really good for cutting up wreaths. They're easier than scissors. Um, then we're going to need some floral pins. These are like little square pins. They're kind of hard to see on there that um, are used for wreath making and for other floral type decorations. And you're going to need a good pair of scissors. Actually not too good. You don't want to wreck your sewing with scissors, but um, if you have a, at least a sharp pair that cuts. And that's it. So stay tuned for the instructions on how to put it together. For this project, we're going to use an inexpensive styrofoam wreath form. I actually reuse mine every year, so it's even less expensive because I don't have to buy a new one. <laughs> and then we're going to add some ribbon to cover up the white part. Uh, I use this gold two and a half inch wide ribbon, also from Michaels. You can use, of course, whatever color you need for your Christmas decorations, but I'm doing gold this year. So then you're just going to take the ribbon and 
put it sort of on an angle inside the wreath form. And then we're going to use a floral pin to attach the ribbon to the wreath form. Just push it in there and hold the end of the ribbon in place. And then we're going to start wrapping that ribbon around the wreath form. Make sure that the edges overlap so you don't see any of the white. And keep going all the way around until you get back to the other end. You want to make sure that you're kind of pulling it a little bit tight so you get rid of any bubbles or, you know, kind of lie smooth on the, on the wreath form. And you can see I'm starting to collect some glitter already. <laughs> My table will be full of glitter by the time we're finished. And when you get back to the end, we're just going to take another floral pin and pin that end in place. It's a little bit hard to push it in because you've got an extra couple layers of ribbon there. And then just cut the end off. And I have enough ribbon left over on this roll to make another wreath if I wanted to. Okay, so next we're going to be putting some greenery around the edges of the wreath. Actually, in my case, maybe I should say whitery because <laughs> they're not green, but it's basically evergreen shaped type <laughs> garland that I got from Michael's again. I like using garlands for this kind of thing because it gives you lots of flexibility for how long of a piece you have. And they're also relatively inexpensive when compared to buying the you know, individual pieces. You could also use live uh, evergreens if you really, if you wanted to do that. Anyways, we're going to put the end of it down at the bottom of the wreath and then go sort of two thirds of the way up. And we're going to do that on both sides. And once you've figured out where you want it, then you just need to cut off the extra garland off the top and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so you want the piece on the bottom to sort of overlap with your first one and wrap it around the wreath form get it to about the same height as the one on the other side and again cut off the extra part of the garland all right now we want to attach our greenery to the wreath form. So this is more floral pins. I usually use one for the to attach this both stems at the bottom. So I just overlap them and then stick one pin in. You want to push it in tight. Make sure that it holds those ends in place. Again, it's a little bit tougher because of the extra ribbon you have to go through. And then we need some more floral pins on the ends to hold the ends in place. I usually find one pin sort of closer to the end of the branch works fine, but if you need more than that, feel free to use more. Just however many you need in order to make it look like you want. I usually try and put the pins in underneath some of the needles so that you don't really see them when they're on the, on the wreath form. Okay, then you want to look at it and make sure you like the way it looks, that they're kind of even. I decided mine were a little bit too long, so I cut off the top few branches just to, to make it a, a little shorter. And I like that better. Okay, now I'm ready to start adding some leaves. So I got some gold glitter picks from Michaels again. Um, and they come with these really long stems, which are good if you're, in some cases, if you're actually sticking them into the wreath. But in our case, we're not going to do that. So I actually cut the stems off. And wire snips are really good for this. They actually have wires in them. So using scissors is a little bit hard. The snips work really easily. And you can use scissors if you don't have snips. You'll just have to cut down a little bit harder. So I'm going to position the leaves at the bottom so that the stems cross again, kind of in the same place as the where the evergreen stems were crossing. But before I attach them, I want to go and make sure that the flower that we're going to put in the middle looks good, or the leaves look good where, it's, where the flower is going to go. So for the flower, I actually get these on this, it's a bunch of five stems with floor, flowers on them. I think these are magnolias, but anyways, you could use poinsettias or whatever kind of flowers you want. 
And the reason I like these is because the flowers actually come off. You just pull the flower off the little plastic stem and then you've got a flower with no stem, which is what I want for this wreath. And then we're just going to take the flower and put it on there and make sure that the leaves look good where they you know, are positioned right. And you know, you can move them around a little bit until you like how it looks. Then take the flower off and then we're going to attach the leaves using floral pins again. I just push the floral pin in. For this I use two pins, one for each leaf. I just find that it, they stay in better because the stems are pretty thin and there isn't really any crossing branches to help hold them in place. Make sure that they're attached. So sometimes if you've got too many of the evergreens underneath they don't really stay so you might have to put the pin in and try it a couple of different places to make sure that the leaves are going to stay where you want them to be. Once you've got it in there and everything seems to be steady holding, then you want to go and place your flower. So on the back of the flower, there's these little plastic stems, I guess they are, for, that hold the flower petals in place. I just take a floral pin, put it over the top of one of the stems, and then push that floral pin into the wreath form too. And you kind of want to have it centered over the leaves and covering up where those stems are crossing underneath there. Push it all the way in so to make sure that your flower stays in place and then you can kind of rearrange the petals so that they look the way you want them to. Now if you like this you could actually just use the wreath just like this and it would look really nice but of course I always like to add a little bit extra <laughs> so I am going to go and use another garland. This one has sort of crystally balls and little pearl balls on them which I thought would look kind of like you know buds or seed pods uh, for as part of my flower so I'm going to cut off these little bits that are on this garland maybe get five or six of them and I'm going to attach them onto my wreath around my flower Again, the wire snips work best for this since these are wired onto the garland. So it just makes it a lot easier to cut than using scissors. And once I've got a few of them cut off there, then I'm just going to attach them onto the wreath around my flower. There's a couple of options for how to attach them to the wreath. The first is to pull out uh, a wire section and just wrap the wires around a leaf stem. So this lets the little crystalline balls and pearls be a little bit further out from where the flower is. And you might have to wrap them around a few times just to make sure that they stay in place. The second way is to actually use the whole stem as it comes off the garland. And for that, you can either just stick it inside of a floral pin that you've already got on the wreath, if you can find the space that'll hold it tight enough, which is what I did with this one. Or you can just get out a new pin and pin them on there somewhere. And I usually try and get the pins so that they're underneath the flower so that you don't see them very much. And I just went around and, and put three or four of these little balls and pearls on either side of the flower. So once again, if you don't want to do any more than this, this would actually be a very nice wreath, just like it is. And it's very pretty and you could just hang it like that. No problems. However, I of course like to put extra stuff on there. So I'm going to hang some ribbons coming down from underneath the flower. And I am going to use this diamond wrap ribbon to do that. So I'm going to measure out about nine inches. Of course, can use whatever length you want. It doesn't have to be nine. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to use it at all if you choose not to. And I'm going to cut this diamond ribbon to nine inches. And then I'm going to go through and cut off each individual row. So it has little rows of crystals in it. And I'm going to make each individual row into its own little ribbon. And I think this is the most time consuming part of the whole project. So if you have some family members who are willing to help, this would be a great time to get them involved.
Okay, now that we have our ribbons cut, we want to attach them to the wreath. So I'm using floral pins for this. I don't know if you can see it, but each one of these little ribbons has a little hole underneath each of the crystals. So I'm just going to go through the little hole underneath the first crystal and attach it onto my floral pin. And I'm going to do this for four little ribbons on each pin. Just thread them on there. Fortunately, it's a little easier than threading needles because <laughs> the holes are bigger. And then you're going to go right underneath the flower on the bottom of the wreath form and stick the pin in there. And what I want to do is actually spread these pins out all along underneath that flower so that it makes like a, a wide swath of ribbons hang down. So I'm just going to keep going until I've filled up five or six pins worth of ribbons all the way across underneath that flower. And the very last step that I did anyways was to go and make those ribbons uneven. I like the look of them better when they're not all the same length. But again, that's totally up to you and how you like it when it's hanging up there. So but for me, I just went and chopped off some of the ends different lengths to make them look a little more interesting. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now that we've finished our wreath, all we have left to do is to hang it. So I have a couple of ways that I usually hang my wreath. The first is if you want to hang it so that it's you know, hung down a little bit from your hook. So maybe you're doing it in front of a window or somewhere where there, you know, there isn't a hook right there to hang it on. In that case, I usually take some ribbon. Could be the same kind of ribbon you use for the wreath or it could be something different. And I just wrap the ribbon around the top of the wreath. You know, cut it as long as I need it to be to hang down as far as I need it to. And then I staple the ribbon together. Put the staple at the back so you can't see it and then you can hang your wreath wherever it needs to go. The second way that I like to hang wreaths is if they're, it's going on a hook or a nail or somewhere where it's not hanging down. The, the hook is right there and you want it to be at the back of the wreath. So to do that I just take one of these floral pins that we've been using for the whole project, stick it in the back of the wreath at the top and put it most of the way in. Just leave it so that it's sticking out a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that on there, but it's sticking out about a half an inch. And then you can just hook that over whatever hook or nail you have available. And your wreath will be hung. And that's all there is to it. So thanks so much for watching. Until next time, this is Wanda Simone wishing you a wonderful and creative day. Bye!